Hey, welcome back. I'm Michelle. And if you're new to my channel, we talk here about emotions and intuition and the conscious awakening. So I'm happy you've stopped by. I'm sitting here in the clarity room, which is my office. And I have been getting, getting a lot of mm, hits to come on and talk a more about what's going on in our global world because we're all a part of it whether we live in areas that are going under more stress or um, where band-aids are being ripped off and healing has to begin so this is happening everywhere on the globe and for me i think when i caught a glimpse of what was going on in Afghanistan um, on, and I'm always the component of if something has a triggering effect within me as a light worker it's not my job to pretend it's not there it's not my job to think that all of that energy is being dumped on me like that's that's not the way we look at that anymore in fact what we're being called upon to do as light workers is to actually see when we see something that's out of balance and it's so out of balance in so many different ways it's because we have an opportunity to heal things from more of the divine feminine way which is to be more loving and accepting and that means not only do we have to do it in our own world which is always the toughest it will help to see what, we, what it is that we're all desiring on this planet. So today, before we get started, I want to call in um, Kali Ma, Goddess Kali, for clear cleansing and resetting. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and spray that for all of us. I'm calling her in. And then I'm going to call in White Buffalo Woman. And... That's all about shape shifting and doing ceremony and expecting less than a miracle. And so that's what I am imprinting here in this video for all of us. So I'm calling in White Buffalo Woman. And I've lit a candle, although you can't see it, an intention candle. Because as more and more of the injustices and things that have been swept under the rug and ignored and people are still being violated and prosecuted. It's time that we understand what we can do and how we can function in a world that's really in going to be in an upheaval, like we came here at this time for this reason. And I can really feel that for a lot of people, um, that although when we're in when we're in a month when we're in a change like what's going on on the planet it's uncomfortable it's causing all of us to, to take a look at um, what's happening in our own worlds and it's not always easy in fact it's not easy it's not easy so let's talk a little bit about I want to talk a little bit about the Hopi um, the Hopi Indian chief white eagle it was interesting I had someone send me what he has been talking about in regards to current situations happening on the planet. And I loved it because it's lovely to see the indigenous people of America uh, finally being seen and heard themselves and in, in a different light in capacities how I feel about it. And it's on my Facebook page. I'll link it um, because I think it's really important for all of us to understand that even when the world seems out of control or maybe that there's just so much change going on and every country has got something going on, that there is that moment where when we feel or see the news or information about the, about the global calamities that are going on, how it really pings within our body. And in the New Age movement, we talked a lot about how 
the law of attraction, like if I saw something, and, I, and I'm taking this back a little bit, but when I would see something that was unpleasant, you know, somehow, some way, that was meant that, you know, I wasn't vibrating high enough or, you know, there's something I needed to clear and cleanse. And, and I'm not taking away from that, but we've evolved from that. Like, like in everything, we always evolve and we grow consciously. And the idea is, is when we're seeing things that are injustices, that are not of humanity's greatness, it is our job to take a look at it and be a part of the solution so how do we break it down and understand how we are the solution of all of it? It's not easy, not easy, but it's very much part of our collective journey. Okay, so what does this all mean for all of us? It's interesting because when we talk about how our frequencies, our energies, our emotions behind things, our feeling states within our body, we recognize that most of us still spend a quite a bit of time in those neutral or lower frequency emotions. And what happens is that those become collective pools. They become places in which it's easy to access anger, sadness, um, overwhelm, unworthiness, because so many of us play and dance within those energetic fields. And there's nothing wrong with those we have to experience whatever we have to experience the world by not denying it but by being with it and then becoming the observer and then making a conscious choice that's the protocol we're looking at now we see something we have a reaction to it then we become the observer and then we have to use our protocol and what's the protocol well, for each one of us, it's going to be different. But let's step back to this idea when we see something that's uncomfortable, that we don't want to um, engage in. It's the idea that when I saw something on the news that was disturbing about the Taliban and women and children and, and what could be coming, what's already existing there is existing there, right? So even though the spotlight's on it again, there was an internal pit in my stomach when I saw this um, a little bit, a little while ago. And what that means is I went from what I was thinking about it and I went into my feeling body to feel it. And it was in my stomach. And so I had to sit with that because that's when I become the observer in a sense of, I'm going to allow myself to feel what I'm feeling here and I'm not going to deny it and I'm not going to be afraid of it because what happens is when we finally can feel the sensation of whatever the response is into the world, that's where integration becomes the big key. And then from there, after feeling it and allowing it to actually almost dissipate because that's what can happen with it, because we're not thinking, we're feeling. And so I'm going into my stomach and I'm just feeling it. Like no words and no thoughts. And then I can become the observer because I felt the experience. I felt the response to my outside world within my physical body. And I was able to then, and this is the protocol, then become the observer. Well, what do I do with this? Okay, what do I do with this example of the world that's healing, but everything has to be shown first before it can be healed, which means as light workers, as highly empathic and feeling easily into the panic that so many were feeling when I witnessed what I saw, is giving myself permission to then go into feeling lighter and brighter. Because what's happening is, as, a, as, as the light worker, I know that now that I felt the pit in my stomach and became the observer and asked myself, what can I do collectively? Like, how do I make an impact? Is we forget that when we also are in the higher alchemist emotional set points, love, joy, bliss, peace, 
compassion, understanding, that I'm also too sending that out and calling to others who are kind of on the precipitous, am I saying that word right? Who are sitting on the leading edge, wanting to go into feeling better themselves. And what happens with that beautiful energy? It also is a collective pool of positive, loving, compassionate energy. Just like I was talking about at the beginning, how when we sit in the pool of sadness, that that collects itself too. And there's, there's these pockets of energy that are all around us all the time. And we're choosing what we're activating within ourselves, which means everyone's doing it all day long. It's kind of like we are forgetting that we have the power of God seeing something awful doesn't mean that I have to stay there because when I stay there and and I keep talking about it and I get sadder and sadder or I or I feel sad and then I want to ignore the sadness neither one is of the utmost good for anybody I have to take the time to um almost pivot so that I can remember that in my world right this second, my job is to not see this as something that's never going to change. My job is to feel the experience, become the observer, and allow myself to anchor in more peace and love within my physical body because that vibration goes on and gets collected into the massive pool of love, patience, kindness, you know, humanitarian, so that other people can tip themselves into it. I had somebody in um, the Clarity Room class last night. We did a, a course, and we were talking about this, and she talked about, you know, it's kind of like the seasoned people have to lead the way and understanding that although in your world right now, you may not be affected by that in your 3D, like day-to-day -day life, but you are affected by it in your emotional life, in your, if you're highly empathic, you, you are affected by it. And everyone is, but sometimes you just don't sense it. So what the beautiful, beautiful um, Hopi Indian chief, White Eagle, was talking about. I'm going to read this a little bit because I just think it's beautiful. Um, don't underestimate the spiritual dimension of this crisis. Take the perspective of an eagle that sees everything above with a broader view. There's a social question in crisis, but it's also a spiritual question. The two go hand in hand. Are you ready to face this crisis? Grab your toolbox and use all the tools at your disposal. Don't feel guilty for feeling blessed in these troubled times. Being sad or angry doesn't help at all. And that's what I'm talking about was what he's referring to. We have to feel the experience, but we have to transmute it within our own body. Because the world is within all your trillions of cells. And so when you are having a reaction to something, that is your job. It is your job to feel it, to heal it. That's what we're all being asked to do without the, without the know-how of how this is going to be resolved. Because the minute we go into, well, how is this going to work? We're back into our analytical mind or our egoic side. And that's not of benefit. That's our old paradigm. So I decided to pull a few cards on this regarding this because it really, it, it, I think it just needs to be focused upon. And so I picked from the journey of love because that's where we need to go is into the journey of love and, and learning to love ourselves and to walk ourselves out of this unworthiness and mm, not living fully and in our best light for the highest good of all. And so I laughed. Um, so this one is, um, and you probably can't see it, but it's let the feminine lead the way, let the feminine lead the way. Now that means all of us have that feminine and masculine energy. And it means that the feminine collective right now is being required because when we look at the feminine, they are about the collective, the, the, the masculine's about the individual, nothing wrong with that. But in today's time that collective way of becoming a part of the community and helping and being of service and being 
the example of love without judgment. That and the judgment part, that's a that's gotta be another whole different video because that's something we're always working on, but boy, that's really big right now. Because when you find out that someone's done something horrific um, to another human being, we have to we all have to come to terms with that also. But for now, let's stay Michelle, stay the course. Let's talk about um, the feminine leading the way. And I love it because this person actually talks about how to trust your appearance, to trust your senses over appearances, trust the intuition over your intellect. And that's what we're being asked to do, to, to reach into our hearts and to allow that to guide us. So how do we do it? We're going to learn that even amongst crisis, we can still tap into peace and calm within ourselves. And that's really the big goal. And when we do that, things begin to shift on the planet. We already know that. There's been so many studies about people coming together, some transcendental meditations, and other people just doing guided meditations or simply silent meditations. But but they're setting the precedent down about what we're focusing on. And then they do the studies of like, okay, if we're, if we're sending love to a war and torn area or a place with high crime, and what they end up doing is they go in and they take a look at all the statistics of what happened during that time when it comes to um, people being violated or the police calls or people walking into the emergency rooms. And what they find is when people gather together and do this, do these meditations and focus on a certain area, the crime rates, the death rates, um, the abuse rates, they all go down. So we, we anchor in that power. That's who we are. And when you're doing that type of meditation, you are getting out of your mind and you're going into your heart center. So the proof is there. So let's talk about that more. So when we see scenes that are that are uncomfortable for ourselves, let's take the time to um, do the good work and send the love and blessings. And that's a great quick way to do it. But if you're triggered by it, you need to come back to it and clear that up for yourself. Does that make sense? So I wanted to pull a second card. So I decided to do the native spirit because I'm feeling very connected um, to what the beautiful white eagle chief was saying. And so I'm pulling from the natives. And this is so... I, you can't make this stuff up. So then we got Grandfather Sky. So we've got the feminine energy and then the Grandfather Sky. And the Grandfather Sky actually in this particular deck is actually talking about that do not hold back and repress your feelings. Your body and your spirit will become drained. If you strive to meet everyone's expectations, but forget to honor your own needs, your energy fields become dull. And so I think for a long time, we've been walking around feeling dull. There's been so many things coming up. And even before um, COVID hit, and there's so many issues arising that after a while, you had to kind of say, who I can't can't hear anymore and I want to talk about it which is good because in those moments people were doing things that filled themselves up um, that flipped it so now as things kind of open close open close and new band-aids are being ripped off for us to take a look at as a collective whole we have an opportunity to feel the experience that's happening and the protocol then goes into becoming the observer and understanding that in this second, your job is to feel better. And it doesn't mean that you have to focus on the negative thing that's going on. You need to focus in on things that make and fill your soul up, which is typically, I'm just waving the flag for all of the light workers on there to come and participate and be a part of this fantastic new earth that we are creating. It's safe to take the blinders off and see what's happening. Many blessings to you all.